So today's lecture, we are going to start a new topic called preconditioning. And this is essentially a process of scaling the design variables of the problem such that your conjugate gradient method works very well. And in fact, most methods of optimization and numerical methods in general will benefit from preconditioning. So in practical implementations, a preconditioner is always recommended for conjugate gradient methods. And the objective of the preconditioner is that it tries to reduce the condition number of the matrix of the quadratic form. Now, if you think geometrically, you can consider an equation in this form x1 square plus x2 square is r square, which is a typical equation of a circle. So here you can think of this as a function and you can think of the Hessian matrix for this function and so on, corresponding to the positive definite quadratic form. And you will see that here x1 and x2 are essentially weighted to the same extent. And so this is a well-conditioned function. However, this function here is not so well conditioned because if you were to take the Hessian matrix corresponding to this function, you would have a disparity in terms of the weightage of X1 and S2 and the condition number of that matrix would be quite large. Now, one trick would be if I make a substitution such as X2 is X2 bar by 10 and put it here, there would be some cancellations here and this particular function would behave better in terms of condition number. And once I have solved this problem, I can always go back here and I can basically extract x2 from x2 bar. So this is a kind of qualitative view of how much scaling can help your life when you are dealing with various problems. And that is because in actual numerical methods, this kind of circular function will work better than an elliptical function such as this. So essentially what this kind of scaling process does is the eigenvalues of the matrix A corresponding to the quadratic form become closer. And so the condition number becomes less. Now let's consider a typical quadratic function such as this function given here. Now if we want to apply a numerical method to minimize this function, let us say the conjugate gradient method, in the end, the method should give you the exact solution of this system. So again, the exact solution can be obtained by considering that the necessary condition for minimization of f would be to take the gradient vector and set it equal to zero, and that would give you essentially ax equal to b. So that is the exact solution of this system. So what a preconditioner does is that a preconditioner is a positive definite matrix M which changes the linear system to this form. So essentially mathematically speaking, this system AX equal to B looks similar to the system here. But the fact is depending on your choice of this M matrix, this system may become more simple to solve using some numerical method. So here your, your aim is to choose this matrix M to bring the condition number of M inverse A as close to one as possible. So if you do that, you are getting to a solution where you are kind of solving this system or helping to solve the system. And then you essentially get a solution in a faster time. Now, if you immediately look at this equation and think about it, you will realize that if you were to pick M equal to A, then essentially this would become a unit matrix. And therefore you would get, you would be able to immediately solve this system here. So the condition number of this M inverse A would become unity. So this is actually a perfect preconditioner. But as you can realize that inverting this matrix A is complicated and therefore you don't want to spend time doing that. 
So typically this is especially true for very large problem size which we are considering for conjugate gradient methods involving 100 design variables or more. Inverting A would be computationally expensive. So what we do is we take a simpler approach that we select M to be a diagonal matrix because the inverse of a diagonal matrix is very easy to calculate. Now, how do you choose this diagonal matrix? Now here you need to think creatively. And for example, a particularly simpler, simple choice would be to use the diagonal terms of A. So if A is a populated matrix, you simply set the non-diagonal terms to zero and just choose the diagonal terms of A to form the preconditioning matrix M. This particular approach is known as Jacobi preconditioning. And if you have a general nonlinear function, you do not know the value of A, then theoretically speaking, the Hessian at the minimum point would be the best preconditioner. Now, of course, you do not have the Hessian at the minimum point when your method is progressing. So the next best thing which you can do is you take the diagonal of the Hessian matrix at the design point at which you are have at which you are currently located. So if you are located at the design point X K, then you have calculated the Hessian matrix at this point. Then you essentially just pick the diagonal terms of that matrix. And that is very simple to use to develop your preconditioner. Now, there are certain situations where a diagonal term of the Hessian may become negative and at that point you can replace it with the I matrix, which means that you are essentially skipping preconditioning at that step. Now, preconditioning is a very big field as far as solution of linear systems is concerned and you can check out more books and papers in that field. For example, you could use uh, more complicated preconditioners based on Cholesky factorization and so on because there are many situations where you factorize these matrices to some extent. And if you do that, then there are certain factorized matrices which are there for you, which you can use to simplify your situation. So now to conclude this lecture, we can mention that whenever you have problems with large number of design variables, conjugate gradient method should be used with the preconditioner and that will result in a huge improvement in your performance. So in fact, this fact is so important that many conjugate gradient methods may come with preconditioners and also it will probably be more useful for you to use a preconditioner than to play around with different conjugate gradient methods and different methods and so on. So generally, this is a useful technique to use in many cases is that if you are dealing with an objective function, you can scale the variable so that the condition number of the problem is reduced and brought as close to one as possible. So I hope you benefited from this lecture and stay tuned to my channel and subscribe for more lectures on this topic. Thank you very much.